Hey guys, Joe Tech here from Joe Tech Tips. We're on Facebook and Twitter, and today we're going to revisit the game War Thunder. And I have a subscriber, Brad Morris, who requested a plethora of things to do. And he writes, which is pretty lengthy, so. <laughs> Using the War Thunder test feature, they give you a more consistent environment for benchmark comparison rather than a random battle which has to deal with random maps and play the users doing random things during the session. That was a mouthful. So what I did was, I did what he asked, but I did it using the benchmark utility that's built into it. And I did see some interesting results. Uh, the frame rates were in the 300 and 400 range because I'm using the plane portion of the benchmark, which is where I actually saw the most useful data. And this is why I use this particular test. Also, I wanted to let you guys know is that capturing the information, like doing a screen capture, actually lowered performance between five to eight frames a second. So I'm gonna show you what I did, um, what I did capture, and then I'm gonna show you a chart based on my findings, because I, I did what this guy requested. But I did a little bit more. So this, just in case there's other people out there, so oh, what happens if we did this and this and this and that and that and that? So I did use CPU Affinity. All cores were turned on, 1632 thread, as requested. But I did some funky things. So I have a, I have a chart here, and I'm going to display it on the screen. And what I did was the first few tests I did were all single CPU, but different parts of the Threadripper, which is interesting. So, and you'll be interested to see what it actually does, and hopefully, it's actually, is mind-blowing, because it's, I don't know, it seems to me that the way this has been interconnected, it's very similar to the Pentium D, but I have no proof of that because I'm not taking ripping my my processor apart. But anyway, it still seems to be winning every dawn test that's out there. But let me go down the list. So I did CPU zero, CPU thirty, CPU thirty one. Now this is in Affinity. If you guys are familiar with Affinity, you can actually assign a particular CPU for a task. This is great for multitasking purposes if you needed to have one application just use, all right, I just want four CPUs for this and everything else would be for the operating system. That's essentially what you can do. So then I did zero plus 31, one plus 30, zero through 31. So I did all of them. Every single one of them is turned on. Uh, then I did six cores, zeros through five. Now these are the, the ones that uh, Brad Morris has requested. Zero through five, six through 11. Then I did zero through 15. And then I did 16 through 31. Now this is cool. Then I did 16 through 31 even. Then I did 16 to 31 odd. So what I'm doing here is using logical and virtual cores. I'm actually dedicating the test to virtual cores, and then I'm dedicating the test to logical cores, which is cool. And then I did all of them odd, and then all of them even, and then I just randomly chose CPUs, which were 15, 16, 30, and 31. And you'll see the, um, the information. It's quite impressive. The frames per second is also there, so I have minimum, I have average and minimum, because that's what the test re uh, re uh, comes out with. And um, hopefully this will be what um, Brad Morris has requested and gives him the answers that he's looking for. It took some time to do. I spent all day yesterday, well not all day, probably five or six hours doing it. I just kept on running the test over and over again and turning off certain CPUs throughout the, throughout the test. There are 15 tests. So Brad, if this is what you're looking for, please let me know. And anybody else who is interested, let me know as well. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I have a lot of views from people, but they just don't subscribe. Please subscribe. 
Please, I beg you, I beg you. Please share this to anybody you want. Anybody. I truly appreciate every single one of my subscribers. Thank you and have a great day. Creative Labs iRaw. Plug it in like, like this. The inside of this is really impressive. 100A in the Prius. The AC adapter, one amp charger, and it's big, and it's made out of aluminum. Okay, as you can see, the backup is complete. Like so. Now you can create the rate array. I mean, for the, for the price difference between the two,